Hello, my name's Keith. I'm one of the founders of Look What We Found, who produce a range of ready meals, soups and sauces. Look What We Found was our voyage of discovery, where we went about trying to find passionate producers and farmers of great ingredients. We also went about to find a cooking process that was traditional yet unique, which would make best use of those ingredients. And we also found some very unusual recipes that were wholesome, yet tasty. And we put all this together with one objective, and that was to make great tasting food. Today I'd like to introduce you to Steve Gibbs, who produces cask conditioned ale. He's very passionate about what he does. He produces a fantastic product, and it works extremely well in some of our sources. Over to you, Steve. My name is Stephen Gibbs, um, director, owner, founder of the Durham Brewery. In fact, people say to me, uh, are you from the Durham Brewery? I say, no, I'm not. I am the Durham Brewery because I started with my wife, Christine, who's actually in the office selling beer at the moment. And we started this 16 years ago. In fact, we're just about to come into the 17th year. Brewery. Uh, well, of course, it's a brewery, isn't it? So. You would assume we make beer, not wine or anything else like that, beer. Um, but we're, we're pretty specific in this. Well, we are a microbrewery. Microbreweries traditionally make cask beer. Now, cask beer is supposed to be live. It goes, it goes into a cask. Some people call it a barrel. <laughs> um, and it goes in live. It goes in with sediment, with yeast, and it continues to work. The yeast continues to ferment in the cask. So we get a change of flavour throughout its life. Unlike the, uh, the keg beers, which are filtered, pasteurised, and recarbonated dead beer. Uh, but our, our beer is all live. Now, I, I'm actually quite um, over the top about this. Uh, we don't filter or pasteurise mess about with our beer whatsoever. In fact, most of the bottles which you will see on a supermarket shelf will be filtered or changed in some way. Now, we do not do that because I feel that if you pasteurise, it's a heat process. If you filter, you take something out. So there is something gone from the original recipe, from the original beer. Our beers develop in the cask. They also develop in the bottle. Now, what, what, one example of, of the, the darker beers which we do is Evensong. And we've been doing this one for years. So one of the first ones we ever made. Now, um, Tanfield Foods uses this one of their, uh, look what we found, uh, it's even song ale um, recipe for a pour over sauce. goes very well with, with darker meats. Um, more it's actually a traditional English recipe. Even song actually won uh, a gold medal in the camera that's Campaign for Real Ale, Great British Beer Festival, 2005. So it, it was it voted the best in Britain in 2005, so it did very well. Now, just to say a little bit about why it's darker, if you like. There, there are different grades of malt where you can go from chocolate and amber to black and, and roasted. So the more kilning and the more heat is used, the darker the malt goes. Now, when you've got darkness like that, you, will get, you won't get much sugar from it because the enzymes are killed off. So you don't get a lot of alcohol from the dark malt. But what you do get is colour and body. Right, now this the test, the final test. This is even song again. Now you'll notice when I pour it, it's not pale. I have to pour this carefully. Now, you see the froth on top of that? The froth is completely natural. The carbonation in this, which gives it its fizz, is completely natural. That comes from the yeast fermenting inside the bottle. That's why I say we don't mess about with our beers. It's, this is real beer. Now, look at that. Now, we'll see that that's a sort of a ruby beer. It's a, a red ruby colour. Have you noticed that when people taste wine, they go... <coughs> well, <laughs> beer drinkers, I'm afraid, 
tend to drink too much when they're tasting because if you don't swallow it, you can't taste the bitterness. You can, the hops don't come through because the bitterness receptors, the, the back and the sides of the tongue. So you actually have to swallow it. Oh, it's terrible. It's a terrible job. Mm -hmm.